for us as humans and as writers, you know, what we can dream up is is necessarily limited by what has what we have fed our mind over the course of our life or what we've been exposed to. And some people might have access to, you know, something beyond that, but that's I think rare. And so, you know, when you no matter what you're writing fantasy and you can combine elements um, from different cultures and you don't have to be true to a particular historical tradition but at the same time I mean we're still working from this pool of what we know as human beings and so I think for me at least um, there's really only so far we can go. You know, when we talk about one of the arguments against the death penalty is that somebody has to be responsible for carrying it out and that's uh, aside from the injustice and the potential you know, however you feel about the death penalty itself, somebody actually has to be the person to do it. And, and what does that do to a person to have to kill somebody? And do, do we want to be a society that, that does that? And so I think in Sarai's case, in a way, um, you know, she, everything that she has done to other people has, has poisoned her. Um, and that I think is certainly a risk of uh, vengeance and, and uh, violence. There wasn't a particular one, but just the idea of uh, a journey or a quest um, with an unknown, you know, destination or being able to be part of a, a journey and see something, you know, kind of go over a hill and see a landscape that has never been seen before. It's just, it's just such, that's one of the things about fantasy, you know, we'll never get to have that experience um, or very few people will ever get to have that experience on earth anymore. But um, that, that, that's where it's coming from with that. And uh, I have always loved like Silk Road stories and like the idea of the old Silk Road and, you know, like Marco Polo and other sort of Westerners who, who did who, who did travel to these places that would have seemed to them like wheat. There would have been stories, but just they're so otherworldly and so hard to get to. And um, I mean, just it completely has always completely fascinated me. As uh, later, after I finished the book, I think I, I started realizing the extent to which um, Laszlo himself in the book is sort of a, a love letter to fantasy readers and uh, to fairy tales and all of these things that train our minds uh, in, a, in a different way than other kinds of reading and make us, you know, maybe more open and receptive to other ways of problem solving and, um, and make our minds just sort of more interesting and beautiful than people who don't read fantasy. <laughs>